Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. And also, welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. I'm your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by for this latest game talk. We have an amazing Kickstarter project that we are previewing here, and I cannot wait. We're just going to dive right in and introduce my two friends over here who are bringing you the Kickstarter called Critical Care. Uh, they will tell you all about this cooperative card game. You all know I love cooperative. You all know I love card games and a great theme of being an ICU doctor. So the two gentlemen who are responsible for bringing you this uh, project. First, I'm going to introduce the gentleman on the bottom. I think this is your original brainchild. Is that uh, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's that's right. It's, Absolutely. It's my brainchild. <laughs> Okay, we have a Dr. Lakshman Swami. He is a critical care doctor. He is just off of uh, shift, and maybe he's going off to another one after we go through this. So uh, the man lives in his scrubs, and he is also living on your tables, hopefully, as well. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real honor. I love your show. Oh, really? I, I, I didn't know. That's real. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, a mutual admiration society over here. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so now we have a repeat guest here on Shelf Stories. Uh, he was the first video preview that I did for his game Hoop Gods uh, on, uh, on my channel. Rap Gods is behind him and he has a lot of other co uh, uh, designs coming. He is young, he is up and coming. He is one of the designers to look out for and he is uh, providing his design chops to this game. He is Omari Akil. welcome back to the show. Thank you, Jason. It's always a blast, you're the best. <laughs> Oh, I love this. I love this, man. I, I'm going to just give myself a moment to just soak in. There it is. All right, cool. <laughs> there it is. That's the moment that we just smelled the roses. Now we're going on to critical care. So critical care. Uh, so what we're going to do here on Shelf Stories is we're going to give the people what they want. We're going to talk about the game, right? This is a, at the end of the day, Kickstarter preview. Uh, might, you know, we got to get that, you know, they're, they're 200, 200 some odd percent funded as we record this video, hopefully more as I post. Uh, but we are going to post this near the end for that stretch run so that we can get, you know, hit the last couple stretch goals and, you know, do as well as we can. So uh, we're going to talk about the game first, gameplay mechanisms and all that kind of thing. And then we're going to get to know the stories of the gentlemen that are making this game. Uh, but gameplay first. Uh, Dr. Shwami, give me the elevator pitch when you first went to, uh, you know, shopping this around or like, you know, kind of in your head and pitching this to people. What is the elevator pitch for Critical Care? Oh, that's it's funny that you say it like that, because I think the first person I really pitched this to is probably Omari. Mm, good. <laughs> so, like, good please taste. let me get good this taste. guy. To get... So, um, the, the you know, the one liner is that this is a, a cooperative game in a time when I think we need more cooperation. It's a game where we work together to take care of ICU patients who are really sick. And it's a tense game. You know, even though it's, it's cooperative, it is really tense. We, we aim to make it never grim, but always kind of authentic to the theme. You work together, um, you lose a lot, but, you will, but it okay. makes you want to win even more. Okay. Uh, who is the audience for this game, primarily? Yeah, so the audience is really anyone, you know, we're saying 14 and up. I've played it with, with people younger than that too. It, um, it, it certainly requires some attention. It's kind of, a, in my mind, a medium weight kind of game, but uh, you don't need any medical knowledge whatsoever to play. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think it's more fun if you don't know anything about medicine and you're kind of picking up these cards for the first time. And You've watched and House, cool you've watched Grey's Anatomy, yeah. you, you, ER, you've watched all that stuff, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. of course, yeah, yeah. Everyone, if, you're if, into if that you watch House, life. you know what spinal meningitis is. So uh, yeah. that's that's a card in the game, I think, or something, something like yeah. that. <laughs> so yep. to do your There's research and get, uh, fire up Hulu, you'll know everything you need to know in order to get into the theme, at least, of this game. So I ask about audience because there's different types of cooperative games, right? Uh, or the and different types of card games. So you can go from the breezy light, you know, I, I mean, not the theme light, but like in terms of gameplay, you know, it's like, okay, you know, draw the card, play what, play what you get, whatever. And then you can go to all the way to the other end of like, you know, uh, setting up your combos, you know, your begin small, you end up big and you go, Ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, chain, chain, chain. So then um, where, if, if you could pick somewhere in that spectrum of where the game would be, where would you say critical care would be? Honestly, I really think it's kind of in the middle because you can play it in different ways. You can have different strategies. You can play it in a way where you're really aiming to create combos and linkages and bring in specialists to let you kind of like go bam, 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 and, and lay all this stuff down. Or you can play it in a much, much more kind of um, fast and loose way of just like, let me, let me get these people better right now. I'm living in the moment. I'm not planning for the future. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, it's cool to see how both can work. 
right? Yeah. And it's very easy to scale the difficulty to kind of generate that type of experience because we have a sort of training mode where you don't have to be as uh, into the nitty gritty of the details and you can still do pretty well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we let you kind of make that choice a little bit too. Okay. So, I mean, tell, tell us about it, Omaria. Tell us about breakdown uh, mechanism wise. So we're talking about it's in the middle and the middle is, you know, that's a, it's a weird term. Cause like where everybody has a different middle, <laughs> but like, you know, somewhere between like breezy, like card game and like heavy Euro S thing. So like we're writing, we're writing like kind of center there. So breakdown uh, mechanism wise, what we're doing in critical care, please. Yeah. So uh, actually one of the sort of coolest observations and descriptions that somebody made about this game uh, was an engine destroyer. Uh, so mm. what the game sort of does to you is the patient's ailments are building on each other and becoming worse. And your job, uh, and that's in the form of their diagnosis and their complications, uh, and the pager alert cards can come in and kind of mess with that too. Mm -hmm. And your so job you have, is So to, like setting up in terms of, I apologize, I just wanted to like get yeah, a mental yeah. picture, right? So like you have patients and they all have conditions, right? And they, you know, we, and the conditions affect mm -hmm. certain parts of them. And then you have, all, I, from what I saw from the previews, you have all these things that are just coming in, piling on cards over here, cards over there. This makes it worse. That makes it worse. So like, it feels like a very kind of thick event phase, so to speak, uh, where there's a lot coming in and then you're responding, right? Is that, is that kind of the flow? Exactly. That's the flow. Uh, the game takes place in two phases. So rounding is what you're, or four phases. Rounding is what you're describing. Uh, and that's when basically the diagnosis and the complications, um, those effects that actually start to build up on the patient and they collect injury tokens. Uh, and you're trying to avoid that. And so after that happens, uh, you go to a complications phase, which can add more injury uh and it's more too much it's too much future. exactly i can't uh, i then, can't do it <laughs> but but the next round is therapy and during the therapy phase every patient or every player is a doctor who gets a 12-hour shift and you get to all play therapies to try to break down mm. some of the the injuries and complications that are on that patient. Uh, and you do that over the course of seven rounds. Uh, we basically, so you have a week in the ICU to try to cure all your patients of all of their ailments. Mm -hmm. um, but that process of playing all the therapy cards and we have the specialist phase, which is at the after therapy where you can bring specialists onto the unit and they basically give you some superpowers and they can be really useful in tackling some of the, the issues that, that the patients are coming against or preventing things that the, the patients are coming against. So mm. uh, it's that this last two phases is really where you have to do all the work to try to eliminate all the problems that happen in the first two phases. Uh, yeah. And you go through that process seven times, hopefully. Yeah. And <laughs> you, you were saying you something about it. like breaking chains. So like engine destroyer. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the I'm imagining a scenario where the diseases or the conditions kind of multiply on themselves and identifying, okay, where can I treat it? so that the multiplication effect doesn't happen and that it's, I'm able to keep them at a manageable point. Is that an accurate way yeah. of describing what's going on? Yeah, exactly. The, the specific mechanism that sort of make is what you're describing is, is really via the complication. So that's where a lot of the management comes into play. So when it's time to draw for complications, you're drawing cards and those cards have injury icons on them because they're only going to affect patients who have certain types of injury. So what that means is your, your chance to sort of mitigate that is by removing completely complete rows of injury. So if you don't have it, then there's less likelihood that you'll get a complication. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the main piece that you're trying to work against. Uh, but unfortunately you often have to worry about crisis and crisis is uh, sort of a secondary uh, issue that your patient can have. And if you get too much crisis, you can code, or if you get too much injury, you can code. So you also have to balance keeping your crisis down and your injury down at the same time. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's always a choice between those and also which patients to treat. So everybody, because it's cooperative, every doctor can treat any patient at any time. So the question is, how do you manage those 12 hours and play the therapies on who needs them when they need them most effectively? Okay. All right, so this is a, a, a doctor game where you are treating a lot of patients and that has been, you know, it's exciting and it's been done before in games. 
So you could go the route of check this out. Uh, this is one of my favorite games, actually, in terms of real time. Uh, so real time Rush MD, this is from Artipia Games. Uh, this is a game where you're bringing client, uh, patients uh, into, I call them clients because that's my, my, uh, my thing. Um, you're bringing them into the emergency room and you're figuring out where they should go. You can treat them in the middle, uh, right there, right then and there. You can bring them into, you know, ICU or surgery or something like that. And you're making those choices fast, you know, fast, 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 fast. Uh, right. And, you know, after four minutes, you kind of take your breath and then, you know, you, you go on again and do a couple of rounds. You, this game could have been that. It's not. This game is much more strategic. It's much more kind of seems like round based and, fig, you know, a lot of figuring out what's going on. So please walk us through the uh, thinking process of why critical care is this, the, the card game yeah, is. Absolutely. And, and those games are super fun, but they're very different because they're much more oriented to the emergency room where you've got a lot of patients coming in and you've got to figure out what to do with them and everyone gets a little bit of attention. The ICU, as I realized this past year and a half, very few people know what an ICU, an intensive care unit is really like. And please, see, if you don't know what an ICU is in your life, good. <laughs> that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, don't, we don't want people to have to know what it is. But right. uh, in the ICU, you know, it's, it's kind of the opposite from the emergency department because we take care of very, very few patients and we don't like chaos. It's all about controlling, controlling, controlling everything. We don't want people to get complications. We want to have be incredibly meticulous. You know, for example, the nurse to patient ratio, we have the, you know, the nurses have the fewest patients. The doctors have the fewest patients. So this game, I really didn't want it to be about churning through a lot of patients, which is what a lot of games are like, right? right. And, and that's right. fun. And, and, and it's a different part of the hospital, right? We wanted really, really in-depth, meticulous care of a couple of patients. And we wanted those people to be sick the way that we are taking care of them. We want them to get complications left and right. And we wanted it to all be really thematically authentic. So the, the big challenge with the game was saying, how can I take the human body and the way disease happens to the body and turn that into gaming mechanisms. And I did it, I would say I, would, I did it in a very rudimentary way. And then Omari really cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, th that's why in a way, when I think about what kind of games inspired this, it's interesting because I haven't played, I'm sure, nearly the depth or breadth of games that the two of you have played, right? Um, you can see, even though this isn't all of my games, it's a very small gaming shelf compared to others. So in some ways that was actually, to me, a benefit. Because a lot of the games I play are games I play with my kids or games mm -hmm. I played growing up. And, um, you know, now I'm I love games like Wingspan and all this. It's, it's, it's super fun. But I haven't gotten to do all that because I've been in the hospital. So it, to me, it's been really exciting because I got to kind of come up with things more from scratch. Mm -hmm. and, and that was really fun for me. And what were some of your basic um, inspirations for in terms of card games? Sure, sure. So, um, you know, I'll tell you, like, for example, recently, um, Seven Wonders Duel was a big part of it. There it completely is. It's different back there. Game. Yeah, it's here somewhere, right? It's a completely different game, right? It's, it's competitive. It's two player. It's all these things. But I love the way that you could link cards over different parts of the game and I can, that you could use icons to reduce text and you could bring that kind of stuff in. That's what I, I love, the smoothness of that in the game. So we brought that into this. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just, I, and I love the idea of in, um, in critical care that when pa the, the complications that patients get are totally based on, they're not arbitrary. They're based on what kinds of injury that patient actually has. You're not going to get heart, cardiac heart complications unless you have problems with your heart. You're not going to get problems with your breathing unless you've got lung problems already or your brain or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the really sophisticated ones are kind of like when you have this and this and a little bit of this and this. So it really cascades and that engine really kind of accelerates in a, in a way that's really, really cool to see mm -hmm. and gets your, gets your anxiety up in a good way to kind of, oh, yeah, you, you know, fix it. Playing this. You sweat, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to lose everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, I mean, we, I think we covered the mechanisms pretty well. Is there anything else in terms of mechanism and gameplay that you feel like uh, the peoples need to know? Well, one big thing that, that Lakshman really brought to the table was we, 
really wanted that the communication and the cooperative Mm -hmm. elements to come through Um, and you know designing co-op games are hard and sometimes that's the hardest part is making sure that your players actually do have to work together they actually do have to solo and plan right it's not just the multiplayer solo and so we we added a few things that i think really helped bring that together uh one is uh so in there's an icu board and you can bring specialists on to the into the ICU and that's where you put them uh, but we also put some some room for therapy cards there so that's a way that players have to work together and decide mm. okay I have this card I can't play it because you have to discard your cards at the at the end of your shift and so you can save cards there and so the conversation always has to happen it's like okay Mm -hmm. does any can anybody use this maybe for one of their patients or do they have an issue maybe coming up that might be able to use this therapy card it's like well this lumbar puncture is really powerful we don't need it now but maybe we'll need it later and so those conversations happening around the table and just just with such a simple mechanism of letting players you have a, a basically a small community pool of therapy cards uh just really 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 brought everything together in a nice way so i'm really glad we we added that in can you solo and- this game can you play this game just one player yes yeah absolutely uh so and and actually the the mechanisms don't change at all and you have even in the solo game you have that space available to save therapy cards Mm because you're your own team at that point um so are you playing two-handed or is it one hand Nope, you just play one. It's okay. just you and a patient. Uh, and and hopefully, yeah, you can take care of them before the seven days is up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dr. Schwarmer, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Oh, no, no. I think, you know, one of the, the sweet spots of the way I think we got this game to, to really click and what I love about where it is now is that you there's such a tension between wanting to play cards that work right now versus the cards that have that'll have an effect even just one turn later that'll be incredible and you really want it and so there's such a tension of what i love to see is when people keep banking cards that they desperately want to play but they just can't quite do it Mm. because they're too hungry for the easy easy win in the moment that you really need it Mm. and that that tension of of i need to do something right now versus i need to plan something for the future um, is so true in the medical world, kind of too, and it, it just kind of really brings that concept together. I just, I just love how that mechanic worked out. You like this game? <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> you're like beaming over there. It's amazing. It's, I love to see that. It's great. You're, you look like a proud papa. Uh, I couldn't have play tested it this much solo in so this sure. many months if I didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I know. <laughs> Has to be a labor of love. Uh, okay, so that is a sense of critical care uh, mechanism wise, if that's what you're interested in, then hopefully, I'm, you know, uh, between this and, you know, my friend Jazz has a nice uh, little explainer. We have a couple of videos also on the Kickstarter page if you want to really get to know what you're getting gameplay wise. Uh, but this is Shelf Stories, right? And I want to know stories. Yeah, there you go. I got the eyebrow raise. I like that from Omari. Um, th- this is what we want to know. We want to know the people and how your experience kind of came together uh, and why you know, what led you to say, okay, this needs to be in, in, a, in a game on a table and everything. That comes from your personal experience. So I'm going to, um, so this is your brainchild, Dr. Schwami. Um, Walk us through, uh, uh, clearly you're a gamer, you know, it's not, you know, you're coming at it from a gamer perspective. Walk us through the, like the moments where you realize, okay, my experience as a critical care doctor needs to be a game. Tell us about that, those moments. So it started with a tweet which is ridiculous. All right, that's how <laughs> lots of things start. Welcome to yeah. 20, post 2010 or whatever it is. I know, I know. <laughs> so uh, it was so kind of random, but a couple of, of doctors on Twitter were just tweeting about, wouldn't it be funny if this if we made a game out of our work? Mm. And it, it kind of ended there, right? We sent a couple emails back and forth and ended. And that was actually in, I think, like January or something of last year. And then this pandemic hit. And in Boston in, in March, it was... It was just awful. It was terrible. And I was, you know, working in the ICU. And and a big part of what affected me about that experience was everyone went through a lot of, I don't know, terrible stuff during that time and still is. But what really bothered me, even on top of all that, was that the ICU, the intensive care unit, this place that I really considered like a second family, all the staff there, you know, like it was like a second home. It was was really corrupted. It was like turned inside out and upside down, where it used to be full of family and full of life and full of 
you know, really close relationships. It was turned into this sterile, alien, dark place. It was lonely. It was terrifying. We, you know, we're thinking we're going to get sick. We think we're going to get our colleagues sick. We're, we're like social distancing in ways when we used to be hugging in the hospital. So it mm. was, it was a lot, right? It was a lot for me. And then on the same time, being an ICU doctor and a, a pulmonary critical care doctor, our, you know, I think I, I felt like this, this burden, like I need to know all of this. I need to know everything about COVID. And so I was getting really overwhelmed just, just like reading, uh, you know, all these papers, listening to all these podcasts, all the doctors are kind of arguing about what to do and then seeing all these people die and, and suffer and not, and, and doing it alone without families there. It really got to me. And eventually I kind of reached this breaking point and I had to kind of step away. And it was, it's really just um, kind of bizarre but the way it worked out for me was that I, in a very private way, it was almost like a journal. I started creating the ICU as I knew it before COVID on, on, pay, on like just on pen and paper. And I just started writing down like, who are all the people? What are all the medicines that happen? What are all the, you know, and I wasn't doing it with the intent of making it for someone else. It was like a really a private thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time I wasn't in therapy. I wish I was. <laughs> that came later. But it was kind of like, I kind of describe it as even doing that process of designing this game was sort of like, um, it was kind of like a life float in a time when it was a really turbulent, you know, and, and my family was a big part of getting me out of that. And, and this kept me afloat. And only when I when I got to therapy, honestly, did that sort of like did the water go level go down. But and it's obviously not gone for any of us yet, but it went down. So it was just a really, that was like what started this. And it wasn't intended to be a game for other people to play or anything. And then I put in over the course of many months, hundreds of hours of, of just building. And, and I mean, if you knew when I told Omari, like many, like many months later, how I did this, he was just kind of like, I remember seeing his face. Oh yeah, I, I designed these 200 plus cards. And then when I wanted to put it into a digital format, I just made them all in PowerPoint individually. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, I could see his like soul just like hurting. When I said that. <laughs> so, um, so that was like kind of how it started and how I created this, this rudimentary game, which to me was, was really just like gears that fit together. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't anything elegant or beautiful uh, or fun until until omari got got involved what led you to contact omari uh i i reached a point where i had put so much time into it and and my wife was kind of looking at this and she was playing it with me and she's like this is this is a thing you should share this thing and i immediately thought i do not know how to do that and and, and i also knew that although i had a game that it really wasn't very good um it had a ton of content like a ton of medical content which was really cool and something totally different but it wasn't really it wasn't like fun and that's when i started to say it started with i want to make this fun and then it became we want to put some messaging in this and some teaching in this. And we want to put like a lot more in this, but I started looking around basically just on Twitter and I started to um, enter the sort of board gaming Twitter world, which I had never, you know, really known before. Um, okay. And, and then, and, and um, eventually like I kind of like kept seeing Omari and, and the reason that I reached out to Omari um, was because I really wanted someone to partner with me on this. I didn't want you know, I'd, I'd worked a little bit with some consultants and it just wasn't the same. I needed someone whose heart was going to be in it. And for someone's heart to be in it, I also knew that that I didn't want them to be like, and I don't think I necessarily could have gotten someone's attention who was super, super, super established and experienced and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted someone who was kind of, would be, would be both obviously knew what they were doing, right? Had already launched all these Kickstarters, already in this world, kind of like thrown like thrown themselves into this world right and and uh taking it on full full on but also was would kind of like have the bandwidth and interest to potentially get them hungry about it and that's what led me first to omari was like i, I need someone who's and man i got so lucky mm -hmm. so lucky and i'll, I'll say it I, i'm sorry i'm talking a lot but i'll say it for two reasons that i got so lucky the first is that omari is brilliant okay he doesn't even know it and i mean the, the, no the most fun i had over the past year and a half the most fun i had with all of this stuff was just when we would talk on the phone and we would just kind of think about things and these ideas that would come out were just so cool 
And then he, he, I would tell him the idea again later, and he would think it was my idea. <laughs> I'm like, no, you came up with this. He's just like really loves it. He's full of love, right? Like so full of love for doing this. The first thing is that, just like incredibly insightful and just figures out ways to, to make more by making less. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is that as I, as, as I learned more and more about the world of board game Twitter, which is, um, you, you might be surprised to know, is actually not as chaotic as the world of medical Twitter sometimes. Um, mm. but, but I think people, I, like, they, you, hear the, you hear those two, three words together, board game Twitter, and people get like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, <laughs> it, it, all the problems. Like, look at some of the other stuff that goes on, people. It's actually... <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the other thing is that, you know, just such... Omar is such a positive force uh, in general, but also so so respected Mm -hmm. and and i I mean that's obviously for very good reasons and and like built up a reputation that's sterling right but i didn't know that when i found omari right so i really feel like i lucked out because because it's it's just incredible working with omari great Uh, omari is i know he's sitting right there because he's really embarrassed like he's a board gamer designer in his soul Mm -hmm. Like that, yeah. that, that is yeah. it, like it's root and died in the wall. And you can't say that about a lot of people, really. Like there's a yeah. lot of people who do it and they're talented at it, but it's not in their soul. This yeah. one is like, you know, he'll walk by a bubblegum rapper and it's like, look, I can turn that into a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a shoelace. Oh yeah. That's, I got, I got lots of ideas for that one. Anyway, <laughs> enough embarrassment. Uh, so then Omari, so then this, the, um, so he comes to you and he's not, you know, uh, this is a person who just has a game. So then what led yeah. you to engage with that? And like, what did you see in the design to say, okay, I need to be a part of this? I mean, it, it was it was a pretty easy choice for me, honestly, because what I saw it, like in in the, the initial prototype, because very quickly I was like, oh, you made something? Like a lot of times people will approach you and they just have an idea, right? right. And yeah, Lakshman was like, I made this thing and it needs work. Can you help me with it? And when I looked at it, I saw those hundreds of hours. The power, like, the PowerPoint, I, you saw the PowerPoints? <laughs> I saw the PowerPoint, but I saw the hundreds of hours right. of work in it. I could see the thought put into how the, the interactions between the cards work based on the medicine. I saw that. I saw where uh, Lakshman had already broken down the phases. There were more of them, I think. Uh, we ended up trimming back a little bit, but the the structure was there and it matched the the ICU and the theme based on you know the description and what he was trying to, to accomplish. And I saw that passion. Like I saw it in the beginning too. It was like, when, when we first just had a, a few conversations about what the game could be and just in, in my brain, I was like, it has all of this information, all of this, this knowledge and it's, but it's not a core part of the game, but you can absorb it just by playing. I was like, that's, mm. that's like very reminiscent of what Wing, Wingspan does really well. Mm. And he described like how the sort of cooperative elements should work and I was like oh, wow these are these are like very similar to the things that I love about the really good co-op games and so I saw a vision for a game that could be spectacular mm. um, and and that to me was a key part in just being like yeah I think we can make this happen and a, a thing that I actually and and you you y'all are wonderful just like the building me up and lifting me up on the board game design. Uh, but I think, and, and this is something I've, I've really come to more recently, my sweet spot in game design, I think is bringing other people's mm-hmm. vision to life. So Rap Gods even, Rap Gods is my brother's game. This was his idea. 10 years before we ever even started working on this, he had an idea for a hip hop game. And I saw that passion. I saw that excitement. And that's what made this game so good. And I think that it's the same thing for Critical Care. It's like everything that Lakshman brings to the table is what excites me and mm-hmm. what gets my gears turning to try to make it work. So I, that, that it was it was an easy yes for me when I really just just looked at how much was there and what direction that we wanted to go. Okay. So then let's get a little, you know, we have a lot of fun, a lot of um, you know, interactions. That's, I, I like to get a little bit serious a little bit because this is a serious subject, right? Um, you know, 
should this be a game? I hear that a lot, right? You know, we're talking about life and death here. We're talking about like, you know, even the word game seems to take yes. a very serious subject and trivialize it because that's what games are. They, they're the trivial things with low stakes. And so uh, was that a, a consideration that you grappled with in terms of should this, should I be gamifying this experience? Go ahead, Dr. Schwami. Um, absolutely. And, and I mean, in fact, that's why I couldn't talk to people about it a lot first and why it was a private thing, because a lot of people would, would, you know, understandably say this is the most serious thing, especially right now. It's I mean, so many people who who are um, who see this on social media now and don't know, for example, that 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 I made it, that clinicians are involved in making it they see it as grift, I think. Right. Yes. And they're kind of like, yeah. you know, you're taking it. And there, there were those things. I saw those, those games that came up that were really just barely even games, first of all, but just trying to take advantage of the yeah, apples to apples COVID. Yeah. And I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, definitely a real concern. And I think what makes me feel like this is, is worth moving forward in that direction is first of all, keeping it super authentic. We don't, we don't trivialize anything. We don't make it seem like people like there's not suffering. In fact, suffering is a major component of the game. Um, we acknowledge that, right? So the authenticity is really important. Um, and and there's a lot more authenticity also in kind of looking at our own flaws in medicine that that I wanted to really put in this. So. I want this game to kind of scream in a way, this is real. So when people in medicine are playing this, they're going to say, yeah, that, that is true. That's not, this isn't like sugarcoating anything. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we didn't want to make this really grim, right? We wanted right. this to be accessible. We didn't want to make it really, really dark. We wanted it to be, to find that balance of both. It's telling a true story, but it's not, it's, it's, you know, we wanted it to be light enough that really, you know, I wanted truly a 14 year old and I've played this with, with 13 year olds. And, and, you know, they, they, um, what I, the reason I think it matters is that it's not just a game. It's not just a game. This is a vehicle for teaching people so much that no one ever tells you. I mean, if you ask most people out there, they won't even know what an ICU is, first of all. Second of all, they're not going to know the dozens of, of clinical staff that work together to, to take care of someone who's sick. So first of all, I want kids to play this game and see all the different jobs they can get, mm, right? Like how many cool careers are there where you can save lives, right? This is amazing. And you can see how cool it's everything from, yeah, the doctors, but also, you know, um, the, the physical therapist, the social worker, the chaplain. We got like all these people in here, right? So it's There's really- There's a chaplain? Think, you got a chaplain, chaplain there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did a chaplain work. Yes, <laughs> that's me. I, I feel seen. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, like what, what kid is thinking, what would it be like to be a chaplain in an ICU taking care of patients at the end of life and the staff, right? So there's there's a lot of, of education in there about what that stuff. There's education about the actual medicine because a big problem with what I do is that I speak a different language. I speak it. And when someone's on the phone or in, now on the phone, when they're, when they're, when a family member's in there, like sitting in front of me and, you know, I'm talking to, to you and your dad is lying on that bed, right. On life support. I got to say things in a way that you understand. And the truth is that's very hard for us. And we don't do a good job at it. We use a lot of jargon. Right. And so I wanted to take all of that and, and patients are, are family members are always kind of like embarrassed to ask, what do you mean by that? And there's so many issues. And there's this whole world of kind of communication there. We wanted to break that down and say, let's democratize it. Let's make it. So you hear the real words and we tell you what they mean. And now we're also going to tell you how to pronounce it. Let's give you all of that. Hmm. You're going to, and by learning it, some people are also kind of saying, oh, all the armchair doctors for COVID are going to, are going to just think even more that, no, I think everyone who plays this realizes how much depth there is to the medicine, how complex hmm. it is, like how many people are involved, how much skill is there. So I think hmm. it really care that message is what makes this game is the why of this game, right? It is what makes it okay that it's a little lighthearted because you're also really learning powerful stuff while you're going through it. Uh, Omar, we talk a lot about, you know, both in our public and our private and, you know, going back and forth, shelters are all about it, the message. So then yeah. talk to me a little about, you know, you don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you have like a medical background particularly, um, but you, you got a sense of message from this game. So uh, tell, so maybe share a little bit about how you resonated with that aspect of the design. 
I mean, for me, it it was absolutely jarring to see a lot of the things that Lakshman is describing, the number of people involved, the number of like when I when I whenever I'm reading like some of the descriptions on the cards of the even just the procedures themselves and the therapies and some of the complications, like it just makes me understand like the the challenge of anyone having to deal with this in any capacity in a real way and that to me was was enough to be like I really want to support this and put this out in the world because I think that I think people feeling that is real and 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 total credit to to Lakshman and a few of the other medical professionals working on some of the content the actual like card content they really highlight things and issues in medicine that are real. There's, there's cards that mention and describe race and gender, uh, just issues that also happen to happen in the hospital because that's a part of our world. And the fact that, you know, they intentionally didn't shy away from that, but, but actually put it in the game as content in the game was really powerful to me too. It's mm-hmm. like, we, we are, really trying to treat this like a real thing and trying to connect with people in a real way on it and and painting a realistic picture of of what what the game represents Mm -hmm. i mean so this is where um like like getting into the real deep stuff like you're talking about like visibilizing right Mm -hmm. you know like people don't know and we talk about that all time of shelf stories if you don't know now you know like you got you got to visibilize these things and you know i'm a psychotherapist and, you know, in health, in healthcare and during COVID, it has been real. And I don't talk about it a lot, but, you know, I had a client pass away, you know, this past week and it shattered me, you know, from stuff, this stuff. Right. And I imagine, you know, you've seen stuff, right. How do you, you know, it's like, it's like I open it to how do you dot, dot, dot. Right. Um, yeah. And how do you just kind of move through and process uh, this stuff. And cause I think that there's a gaming link in there, right. In terms of how yeah. you kind of do that. Go ahead. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I notice a lot of comments from other, from other healthcare workers who are seeing this game are kind of saying, um, right now, a game about this, about work, like it's so like, this is so triggering. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, it's amazing because I totally, I would have thought the same thing, but to me, making this the, the key is is this is this one thing this game is set in 2018 that's the key and that's why it says me, so like on the on the on the packaging it's, or it's, on the it's it's, there. it's set in 2018 and the reason it's set in 2018 is because there's no covid there's no covid in this game I made this game, this whole like world of this fantasy ICU was created as a way for me to escape COVID and to remember why I love this work because I was forgetting. We're all forgetting. I just wrote a rec letter for a nurse to leave the bedside. They're like, it's happening, right? It's happening everywhere. People are just leaving because it's so bad. And I'm not doing this to say that, you know, this is going to suddenly make it all better. But for me, this really reminds me about all the amazing stuff we do and how, you know, one day there's going to be an after COVID there's going to be a world where we can go back to having families at the bedside where we can have all of our colleagues together. where We can meet and do all the stuff that we do where we can kind of like operate in the way we're supposed to and take care of people and save lives. Right. Instead of COVID. The families are not at the bedside even now, 18 months in. No, it's very, it's hard. It's hard for, for COVID. I think from, this is a, there's a lot of advocacy going on here, but um, it's different at every hospital in every city. Mm-hmm. I think for the most part, people with COVID aren't getting any visitors. It's still all face time right. if that. Um, and then for people who don't have COVID, it's loosening up a lot. There's still restrictions. My, one of my family members had a baby born this past year. Baby was in the NICU and got better. But for those 10 plus days in the NICU, only one family member is allowed to check in and be there, right? And the the mom is breastfeeding. So for those, you know, that week and a half, two weeks, he couldn't see his baby who's in the ICU, his first 
kid, like just born, right? The weight of that was, just, and it just like, there's no, they didn't have COVID. None of, none of them had COVID, but these are the policies. Right. And it's heartbreaking, right? So that's the kind of stuff, like that's the world we're in right now. And that world sucks. But this, to me, this is a way of, it's not just a fantasy of escaping. It's a fantasy of escaping to a real world we used to live in and will live in again. And that's right. why it's so important to me. Right. So like, you know, people think of gaming as like, okay, you know, uh, here's the real world and here's this magic circle, trivial world. Right. And then like, but if you're in healthcare and I use games in therapy, right. And I'm, you know, I'm all about that stuff. And to me, it's like, okay, like there's a lot of people, more people now than ever, but this isn't like unusual of like the world is dark. And then we're going to bring you into a circle where there's light and the light doesn't have to, like, we, like, it's not trivial. It's not, it, it's, it's not the stakes of real life, but it's not trivial. Mental stuff is going on. Emotional stuff is going on in that circle. And it could be joyful. Like it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, ha ha funny, but you know, there's that deeper sense of joy, that yeah. integration that can happen when you're really playing something when you're really playing something. Right. And it feels like that ultimately, like this is, this game is the light circle in a dark world yeah. for you. Right. And hopefully for some, and hopefully for others. Yeah. Is that a good, is that really a good way is. to kind of center it? Yeah. It really is. I mean, honestly, this is, it's such a bad time for us. And this is the like one thing that is to me bright and beautiful and happy and uplifting. It just celebrates all of our staff. You know, like we don't feel, we certainly have never felt like heroes during this. And we don't feel uh, very supported. So it is because that's why I was kind of like, I just want to reach you a hug. I just want to give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I need it too, brother. <laughs> I know. I need it yeah. too. As I start yeah. my 44 client week again. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank well, you. You live, you're in Boston? Yeah. All right, I'm coming up. I'm in Hartford, so I'm. <laughs> oh, <you're> in Hartford. <laughs> we're making this. We're making this happen, brother. <laughs> you're gonna meet him before right? I do, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> I'm gonna make it happen. I don't care. <laughs> but that's what this is, the family. You know, this is it's So it's a game, and there's that that top level. And I structured the episode intentionally. So okay, there's the game, and then there's the people, and then there's the pain. You know, yeah. but then even in all these layers, this game sounds like it has resonance. Because not only is it a fun game, Mr. Amari Keel, board game developer extraordinaire, has his fingers all over it. Uh, not only is this a game from, you know, a heart of, for certain people, it's a game that answers pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that is that a good way to kind of say that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. So I can't think of a better, you know, way to really close this out and be like, you know what? Back this game because it is more than just a game. It's got, it's got a soul to it. Yeah. Right. Oh, so then uh, closing pitch, uh, Mr. Omar, I'll go back to you. Closing pitch in terms of critical care, opening this up to people. What do we got? Yeah, I mean, critical care is a, I think, really, really, really good and beautiful cooperative game. And I think it is it is good for a lot of different people in a lot of situations. If you're ready to deal with some of the medical issues, terminology, if, if that's something that's not triggering for you, I think this game might be something to look at. Um, we're doing great on Kickstarter. A lot of the feedback has been so good in terms of how engaging it is, how it's tense, but when you when you win, it's satisfying. And, and people are loving how the theme integrates with all of the, the, the game functionality and gameplay. And that's really all I can ask for um, is, is, you know, the way that people are describing it now is exactly, I think, what, what we intended. Um, and yeah, we're on Kickstarter now until October 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would, I would love for, for any support for anybody who, who has the capacity for something like this. And I don't think you'll regret it. Dr. Shwami, closing pitch. What do we got? You know, um, it's, I hear so much about, you know, we talked a lot about how this could be triggering and all this. You should know that ICU survivors yes. are designing this game with us. Yes. You know, yes. like these are the people who actually had the breathing tubes down their throats and the IVs and their necks and all that stuff. And they came out and they want to share it with people. You know, their lives were saved. They also went through trauma. They want all that to come through in a way that's not too heavy. 
And I think that's the sweet spot is that you'll play this and you're not going to go to bed thinking, oh my gosh, can you, it's much less than a, than mm-hmm. an intense episode of ER or something. It's nothing like that. You're going to play this and you're going to have fun. You're going to have fun. And most of all, you're going to have fun because you're helping your family out. You're helping your friends out, whoever you're playing with. That's like mm-hmm. just an awesome feeling, right? Like I saved you. It's right. the opposite of the grudges from risk. You know, it's the opposite <laughs> of that. <laughs> The mutual deserved destruction. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I get too. that question a lot. Like, how do you do this? I've been a psychotherapist for 10 years now uh, and in human services longer. And, you know, like, how, like, that's the question. How do you hear people's problems for, you know, and then that becomes like the way we think of it. Right. So it's like, I look at a game. It's like, why would I play a game about sickness? And why would I play a game about whatever? And it's like, the answer is, it's not a game about sickness. It's about a game. It's a game about making people well. Yeah. You know, I, my career is yeah. about making people happy and whole and think better and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, you can look at it bad if you want to. I mean, that's not going to get you too much, but like, <laughs> you know, like look at it, look, yeah. look at it in terms of the integration, look at it in terms of like, you know, what is possible because of, you know, all this stuff. And it sounds like, it, you know, uh, I'm going to have to drive up uh, where, you know, you have the prototype there, right? You got a little, got a nice little, uh, it's uh, coming prototype. today. The newest one. I can't oh, wait. Oh yes. <laughs> we keep sending them out. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Every time you get one, it's like, okay, put it on camera, please. Uh, so yeah, I gotta, I gotta check it out. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that was critical care. It is on Kickstarter. Uh, please let the people know how they can reach you. Uh, you budding game designer. If you put the work in, if you got your PowerPoint, the, you know, ideas are great, but if you put the work in and you want to reach out to Mr. Omari Akil, how can they, how can they uh, reach out to you? Yeah. You see that work. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah, gotta see that work. See it. Yeah. <laughs> So where can uh, they reach you? Can you can find me. Uh, I'm a killerverse all over the internet, Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, Facebook. You can find me at any one of those. Uh, you can also find my publishing company for Rap Gods, the upcoming Hoop Gods, uh, Colorway Game Labs uh, is out there as well. So oh, we yeah, got to get that, that, um, that, that, creator, that container. We got to get that container going so that we can get Hoop Gods and Rap Gods at the table. Right? <laughs> <laughs> soon, I'm waiting. Soon. <laughs> Dr. Swami, how can they reach you on uh, the Twitters and all that? I'm Lax Swami, L-A-X-S-W-A-M-Y. You can, you can find me. <laughs> LA, uh, you said please, L-A-X-S-W-A-M-Y. I'm, I'm going to add you right now. Uh, this will be breaking on the, on the Twitter, on the, on the thing. I'm going to add my man right yeah, now. You don't, L-A-X- you don't remember. Uh, we, were, we were chatting on Twitter about one of your episodes before. but I, I, We were? I wasn't, I wasn't, oh, I wasn't. Critical Care is live. There it is. Bam, look at that. <laughs> oh, we got him. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Come, come follow us. Um, it, it's, it's a, it's been a wild ride. It's, it's only getting faster and better. So I can't wait. Dr. Lakwan Shmami, Omar Akil, uh, thank you very much for stopping by the show. Thank you. Thank you. This if wonderful. you can change your mind, you can change the world people. So until next time, bye everybody. <laughs>